recorded live. Hello, once again. Uh, it's Michael Adams of uh, Old Religion, Dystopia, Knowing versus Belief, and uh, M.K. Davis. M.K., you can find his work on the Davis Report in Awesome. And just press in his name, M.K. Davis, and then put Bigfoot with it. And you'll find all sorts of things. And one of the things he has is a wonderful YouTube channel called uh, Green Wave uh, 2010 FB. And uh, I liked it, MK. I really do. And I'm, I feel uh, grateful and privileged that he's willing to even talk to a bozo like me and spend an hour of his time. Well, now it's been, how many shows have we done now? Three already? There's now four. And, uh, I'm very grateful, MK. Okay, so, um, well, thank you. I appreciate. It. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, and we were talking about a really interesting subject. And that was the uh, ancient, the discovery of the ancient evidence of Bigfoot in Mississippi. In this, this is the name of the video, and about uh, well, a bowl that has engravings on it that has a, a lot of universal symbolism. Where we're talking about. Uh, um, the eye in the hand, the middle of the palm of a hand, and uh, I guess there's and there's uh, it looks to me like if I'm not mistaken, it was the left hand, the symbol. No, it was the right hand. It was the symbol. Um, and what's the? I guess there's there's certain groups of people out there, and depending on the, one's research and study and. Uh, Esoteric meaning uh, has different meanings, I guess. The spiritual, the spiritual context of it, and I know that in your video you were talking about this, the uh, that kind of the belief, uh, uh, suggestion that uh, from, yeah, I guess that is above, so below type of thing, uh, depending how you want to manipulate that phrase. To, but it could be used also to say that. Uh, you know, going to heaven, heaven and earth type of thing. And uh, I find you fascinating you brought that up. Um, and I know it's been a while since you've done it, uh, but from what you remember, can you tell us more about this mysterious bowl that you found in a unique place, discovered of it, I guess. Well, the, these bowls, I found, they're, they're, uh, they're, I found these, they're called effigy bowls. Uh, now you're talking about the one with the handprint, uh, hand drawn on it, with the eye in the middle of the palm. Yes. That, or are you talking about the ones with the uh, with the Bigfoot looking creatures on the edge of the bowl? Well, there's a couple of ones. There, there's the, there's uh, there's the one of the rattlesnakes, and they got the one in the middle of the bowl that has the hand. So uh, yeah, the the, the, the rattlesnakes the rattlesnakes. Uh, are, are just that's another uh, kind of a spinoff of what they have in South America. Uh, probably the very same people, actually. Um, they they just use the local snakes uh, as kind of a model. Uh, but uh, it's basically Kuku Khan, uh, which means feathered serpent king. Uh, and that is the the. Uh, the deity there, uh, and, and if you look, you will see on that disc that their heads are in feathers, uh -huh. um, even though they're a rattlesnake. So a coo is a feather. That's what coo means when you say cuckoo con. A feather is a symbol of truth. So it's basically saying that the deity was a is a deity of truth, uh, and coo. Uh, it's a, I'm, I think that it means serpent, but I'm not sure. The whole thing means feathered serpent king, and I know Khan means king, so that's just process of elimination. Uh, Khan is a very common word, and it's it's got a root in ancient language that this was found all over the world, and it, in every instance, it means king or someone in a high, high place. You, know, you might remember... Uh, the the old Star Trek movie the Wrath of Khan, uh -huh. you know that yeah. he was like a king or an important person, you know. Uh, Genghis Khan, Khan, right? Exactly. 
So Cuckoo Khan, which allegedly these people knew nothing of Genghis Khan or anything over there. But it's kind of funny they had the same word that had the same meaning. Right. Well, don't, don't you think that, that's, that's a bit that, odd? That, well, first of all, this is this assumption on our part to think that they did know anything about Genghis Khan. Uh, you know, he did he did sweep over all of Eurasia, so there's no reason to think that. Uh, uh, that there's well, no evidence. That they, they, they weren't supposed to have been ocean voyages made, you know, at that time. But yeah, uh, obviously, with, 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 a big, with a big wink, with a big wink, wink on that one, <laughs> was supposed to be. <laughs> but you know, then again, you know, the victor, uh, you know, rewrites the history, determines the history of, and they. Uh, Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl is the equivalent of Cuckoo Khan with the Maya. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And and he it also means feathered serpent king. Uh, or, 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 uh, or, or if you're Mormon, it me it's, uh, it's, not, it's Jesus. <laughs> I used to be Mormon. I okay, okay, okay. Well, I grew up uh, whatever the belief is. There, I guess. <laughs> yep. uh, uh, you know, I, I, I don't. I'm not liking anybody's beliefs. You know, if they think that they figured out that Quetzalcoatl was Jesus, well, well, maybe he was. I, I, I can't argue that fact. Um, I know that when Jesus was being uh, tortured, you know, on the cross or the stake or whatever he was, whatever the instrument of torture was, um, he uttered some language that was not either Hebrew or Arabic. Sure. Uh, I've got, I got some information on it here. Hold on just a minute. Okay, here it is, I think. Uh, uh, James Churchwood talked about it. He said that he understood what it meant in the original uh, Lumerian uh, language uh, that he learned from those tablets uh, in, that were in Sri Lanka. And he says that what Jesus said was, Instead of saying, this is the word he said, Eli, 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 Lama, Sabat, Tani. Uh, he said it's not Hebrew nor any tongue that was spoken in Asia Minor during the life of Jesus. It is the pure tongue of the motherland, badly pronounced and spelt in the New Testament. It should have been spelt and read, pronounced, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabat, Tani. Translation is, I faint, I faint. Darkness is coming over my face, which uh-huh. makes a lot more sense than, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, Jesus had never at any time felt like that God had forsaken uh, Right. Well, there's all, so, sorts of, all sorts of theological arguments for the fact, but... Uh, well, it's, it's not a theological way. argument. It's, it's the fact that the language is not any known language. And that oh, no, they try to I'm, I, they I was, try to I, apply they try to apply uh, Arabic to it because Arabic is a very malleable language and when it when they got to something that they they didn't know anything about the translators well they looked for an Arabic expression that was close and they picked the Arabic words that were the closest to it and and so it ends up being my dad my dad why have you forsaken me. But it should have read, I think, I think, darkness is coming over my face. Uh, And church words sent this very same words, Hile, Hile, Lamat, Zabat, Tani, to a a Maya scholar. You know, he was an expert in the Mayan language. And he translated exactly the same way, exactly. Uh that it was uh, a faint, a faint darkness comes over my face. And that was in a, a, an entirely different language, but but it had the motherland as a root. The, the, the continent of Mu is supposed to be the motherland. That's what Mu means is motherland or mother. And that's where we get our word Ma. You know, we call it Mother Ma. But it's a, it's a, it's a 
version of Moo. Uh, and Moo is supposedly, according to those tablets, was the Garden of Eden. Uh, and that man advented out of Moo. The first man was there, and he advented out of Moo. And then Moo sank in a cataclysm that was uh, allegedly a geomagnetic cataclysm that that sunk it and a sister continent in the Atlantic called Atlantis. And that the whole entire, there was an entire, the whole entire count was kept in a college in Egypt and in and, and tablets in Sri Lanka and in tablets in Mexico. And in Egypt is where Plato learned about it. And it's probably where Jesus learned about it, because Jesus spent a great deal of time that, that nobody can account for, and he might possibly have been in Egypt. Um, well, mostly, because yeah, I, 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 I probability. I mean, if you're talking about the Middle East, and, you know, what would they... This, this, you know, that's where... It's the that, crossroads that's the of same, the world. That's, it's, it's the same college that Moses learned the five books of the Bible that he wrote into the pen. What do you call it? The Pentateuch. Um, so Moses already had the account of creation and all of that. These were very old documents that were in a in a college in Egypt, and Moses transcribed uh, them, you know, into the first five books. He compiled them and transcribed them into the first five books of the Bible. And uh, but they were very very old stories, and they were the and they're essentially the same story as the story in uh, Samaria of creation, uh, except that in the Bible's version, they called the first man Adam, and in the uh, Sumerian version, it was Adamu. And, and essentially, they were saying that the Adam means first man, and in the Sumerian, it meant first man from Mu, from the motherland. Um, so these are very, very old stories, very old, uh, and they were old at the time that Moses compiled them. And, and if you read them, they'll, it'll say, this is the history, or this is the account of Noah. This is the account of Adam. This is the account. These are all already compiled, already written. Uh, and, and he put them into a, a, a single book, uh, which later on became the Pentateuch and ended up in the Torah and in, in the Bible itself. Right. Well, uh, Wait, there's a, there, there's a, there's a lost language is what I'm saying. There's a language. It seems, and, and, it seems, uh, it seems to me that for my research, endless research on the Bible and all that, well, um, you know, the first five books of quote, unquote Moses. So we shouldn't think it's, well, the question is, must be if, whether he wrote it or not. How did he write his own obituary? Because it's in it. So, I'm not saying the Book of Moses aren't true. I'm just saying our understanding of what that meaning is. <laughs> yeah, but Moses was an educated man. I mean, he was highly educated. Oh, I uh, believe he was, so. He, I believe. I mean, uh, he was the step, uh, you know, adopted son of Pharaoh. I mean, uh, he. He got he got the, uh, guess, the whole entire everything available. The point the point of view uh, is by the time by the time it was actually written down, at least the the, the what what uh, information we have, it was long past his his life. I, that's probably it was writings of writings of writings of writings of writings of his writings that he didn't have. We, we know, Mo- Moses is not even a Hebrew name. It, yeah. It's Egyptian. Uh, there's, there's plenty of Egyptians with the name Moses in their name, like Tut Moses. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's uh, it, it's it's the the story is so compelling uh, of the of the uh, Egypt of the, um, the the Jews when they left Egypt, the Israelites. Uh, you know, it, it's how how he. Moses had everything. I mean, he he had it all, and and he gave it all up. 
you know, to uh, lead those people out of there. Uh, it, it was because of his education that he did that. Had the ability yeah, to do it. It was, it was because, because of what he did. Yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, fat, fat, one of the fascinating things, too, is that if you, the Old Testament, I don't know if you realize this, but um, never once did the pyramids mention. So that just you know, makes one wonder the question why. Oh, yeah, you think it would be some, some kind of. Yeah, well, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty it's adults. Not, <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, too, is like uh, what we are, are being told what the Egyptian empire was, do we really know how truly how big it was? No, and so we don't. We don't. And so could these folks who are uh, part of the Egyptian empire that we learn about in the, uh, the Old Testament, New Testament, have they... Uh, excuse me. Could they this have migrated is, this is, this is from right, another uh, part... Another part is, I was going to say, could they have migrated from a whole different part of Asia Minor, uh, uh, etc.? This, this is what uh, uh, James Churchwood said about it. According to those texts in Sri Lanka, uh, if they're belie- if to be believed, uh, that that Egypt was settled by a man named Osiris. That it was, Osiris was not a deity. That that he was from originally. From Mu, but he never saw Mu. He was born in Atlanta, uh, and when he got old enough, he wanted he had a desire to learn the original religion of Mu, and so he traveled back to Mu, and he learned the the, uh, the original single religion, you know the. Uh, and then he brought it back to Atlantis, and then he traveled over to the area North Africa and established this college along the Nile, uh, which that college exists may exist today. Oh. Um, it's 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 kind of a, a you know you have to be like a, a clandestinely attend this college. It was it was a. Uh, clandestine thing even back in the days of Plato that when you went there you were going to learn hidden things that were uh, uh, you know special knowledge right and when Plato Plato went there he learned about Atlantis and that's when he wrote his account it was from what he learned in Egypt uh, so uh, Atlantis sank at the same time that Moose sank due to a geomagnetic disturbance which is essentially something from space. Um, something that either struck the earth or got so close that it caused the earth to crack uh, in this crust. And it, 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 you know how the moon pulls on the water, you know, every 12 hours there's a tide. And right. it pulls on it. On, on one side of the earth there's a bulge. And this creates a corresponding bulge on the opposite side of the earth. But if you can imagine something with so much gravitational uh, influence that the crust of the Earth were to be distorted, well, it would cause a bulge on one side of the Earth and a bulge on the other, exactly the opposite, which is would be descriptive of Mu and Atlantis. If it caused the, the Earth to crack and release gas, and they sank into the mantle when the gas was released, uh, they didn't. There, there's not a, a remnant of them laying on the ocean floor. No, that's not what happened. They went down in, in fire and water uh, very very quickly. They, up, they re- released gas that was under the continents that was supporting the continents, and everything went down into the mantle. So uh, there's not any, any... The only thing you have left of them is the, the remnant of knowledge that's here and there across the earth. Uh, that you find uh, sort of uh, in a in a fossilized form embedded in the, the stories and embedded in the uh, the writings of other cultures. And, you know, uh, uh, I know that Muth allegedly had a lot of uh, of colonies, and one of those colonies was in Mexico, 
which is where a whole bunch of those same tablets were found. Same story, exact same story as the as the tablets in Sri Lanka. We told the whole story of the sinking of Mu and the uh, the advent of man out of Mu. Uh, and you know it's compelling. Uh, it, it it's it's really kind of uh, the uh, the essentials of the Bible that the Lemurian religion was was the fatherhood of uh, heaven and the brotherhood of man, and that was the entire religion. That, that the deity, they call him the deity because he was too sacred to mention his name. They were so, so adamant about not mentioning his name that even he had a sacred number, which was 10. And when they counted in everyday life and they got to the number 10, they just called it 5 plus 5 to avoid saying the sacred number. Um, and there's some of the religions of today still do that. Uh, the the Jews in Jesus' day would not say God's name. And, and if you read there, in the, when, whenever Moses was talking to God, he, he says, who shall I tell them sent me? And he says, tell them I am sent you. I am that I am. I am. That's, that's, they wouldn't, he wouldn't say his name. Right. Eventually, the name came to be known, but it was still considered too sacred to utter. And the, the, and, name, uh, for, and all, the, the name for you would be what is it, Yahweh or Jehovah or? Well, one, one, one of them's Yahweh, one of them's Jehovah. Uh, there, there's, there's several actually. Um, you know, there's the divine tetragrammaton. They call it, uh-huh. where you can write it. Um, it, it, but as far as how pe- people say it nowadays, but in the old days they didn't say it because it was so sacred, and that was exactly the way it was in, in Mu. Uh, they had a symbol. Symbol was the, a circle with a dot in the middle, uh-huh. or either a circle with with flames like the sun, and a circle in the middle. You know that they, they were both symbols of the same thing. Flying discs that we were talking about? Uh, yeah, that was called Ra. Uh-huh. Uh, it, in, 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 the, in the continent of Mu, that was known as Ra, that symbol. And that was a symbol as related to the Creator. Um, now, uh, if you wanted to draw just a picture of the sun and not have it represent God, you'd call it Kin. K-I-N. And... Uh, yeah. It usually yeah. had rays. Uh, huh? Yeah, can, well, kin. That's what yeah. they call it. I, I don't know if they, if that's the source of the word kin, folks. I don't know. It's well, you know, interesting. You start, you, you start you, you bringing can, up like kin, and you bring up ten, and five plus five was the hands or feet, which makes us unique. Man uses snakes. Man's cre- creative power is the ability to create a man and a woman. I'm not saying this is all that there is. I'm just saying there's an awful lot of motifs that lead to man, our own ability. What's well, God given the creator's well, give ability that man has given us, you know? You know, the original man, Adam, the first man, Adamu, was, was both man and woman. He, he had essences of both, both sexes in him. He did not have anyone with him. He was a standalone person. He was an angelic expression in the flesh. He was not to have a wife. He wasn't have, He wasn't going to produce offspring. He had immortality awaiting him. And whatever God's plan was to fill the earth, it did not involve procreation. Right. It was only after a long period of time watching the animals that he developed a longing to have a mate. And so God's first attempt to produce a mate for him, because he continually asked for one, was to produce a mate just like him, who had both male and female attributes. Uh, so he produced this, a woman. They call her a woman, but she had both. And her name was uh, Lilith. And Lilith had no, no longing for Adam, because, you see, they were both complete. They didn't have any lackings. 
So they, he, she didn't long for him. He didn't long for her. And it was a competitive thing. They lived competitively. And so after a while, he asked God to dismiss her and, and create him a woman like that, like the animals hated. And, and for God to do this, you get into the, the uh, text of the Bible as the Bible is today, the story of taking the rib, put him into a deep sleep, and taking the rib and using that rib to create woman. He wasn't talking about his literal rib uh, because we, we're not missing ribs. But he was talking about that Adam had to give up some of his own essence in order to produce this woman. Okay, he created a woman who was driven by estrogen. And he created, now Adam no longer had estrogen. The woman had. So he longed for her. And she longed for him because he had testosterone, and she did. So they said the two must become one flesh. So the two become one person. Adam without the woman is not a whole person anymore. Therefore, he dies. He grows old and dies because he doesn't have everything he needs to live immortally. She doesn't have everything she needs to live immortally. The two together become one person, but after a time, they die. And that was the that was the uh, the very thing that God promised to redeem, that He would bring it back into balance, and that we would all have those a complete uh, set up chemically and hormonally and everything else. It's not very likely that if you saw the first man, Adam, you would recognize him uh, as a man. Uh, he would probably look pretty strange because he had both characteristics. He was essentially an angel, but in the flesh. And the angels are complete. They don't require, you know, uh, uh, that's that's why that's why the story of Lilith is kind of important, but it got taken out of the Bible um, in the fourth century. It, it didn't it didn't jive, I don't guess, with the people their understanding of uh, they thought of man as always having been in the condition we're in. But uh, it's it's not the case. If you look at Akhenaten on the uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs, you see uh, kind of a, an effort to draw him as a complete person uh, where he had breasts, he had wide hips, uh, he had a paunch in his stomach, long, elegant neck, long cheekbone, high cheekbone, long chin. Uh, and, you know, some people say he's so different that they think he was an alien, but not, it's, it's, it's that he understood and knew the story. Uh, and so they, uh, they depicted him as as a person like Adam would have been prior to uh, prior to being put into that deep sleep, and and his essence is divided. Um, that it's it's an allegorical story. It, it's just it's there. It's trying to tell us why we are the way we are, um, and, and it, it's not even a perfect split. So we have people that are confused about their manhood or their womanhood or whatever, it's, it's because it was, we're never were supposed to be that way. We're, we're in a condition where, they, you know, uh, we need redemption. Uh, in order to go back to where we were, it was going to take an act of God to bring it back. And that's the whole gist, the whole theme of the Bible is that we're going to be brought back into those conditions once again, and it'll be uh, through the, through the uh, good graces of Jesus Christ. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's, a all in the Bible, but you have to really dig kind of, you know, and understand what they're talking about when they, when they say they took the rib from the man and made the woman, um, you know, they had to re literally rebuild that. Uh, when they said they put him in a deep sleep, it, it's, they rebuilt him. He was, he didn't even resemble what Adam looked like prior to that. So we're, we're, we're not, as men, we're, we're testosterone dominant. Uh, and women are estrogen dominant. And the two long for each other to be, a, so you can complete the person. 
And that's why when you, you see somebody say that, that there was chemistry between these two people, that's, that's what they're referring to. You know, that this, this person had something the other one desired or needed. And, and so it's love at first sight. And that worked. That did produce the effect that Adam asked for, to be like the animals. But it also produced the effect that of, of, of imperfectly dying due to the imbalance. So we die like animals. We live like animals. We die like animals. But we have the hope of redemption. Is that deep enough for you? Well, I could go deeper if you want. It's fine with me. Uh, I got a just uh, for people that don't know about Mu. It's a, a, a continent that existed. What we now know today is the uh, Pacific Ocean. And it has, so you can find, uh, and I'll put a link of uh, some of the uh, information about Woodward and his work and uh, about the map of Mu. I, I you know, of course, <clears throat> it's, it's very ancient stuff, uh, but, you know, it's like, it's like well, uh, it's, Graham it's Hancock gonna... said. I mean, it's, there's ahead. something back there that, that's uh, just a foundation for everything else. Well, uh, the more and more you like, the more and more you you start putting these pieces together, and uh, you realize that we know very, so very little, and that. Well, for those you know, for the generic term, uh, the ruling elite have made sure that the average show doesn't really, unless they really put their effort into it, are going to find any bits and pieces of it. Um, what what our past was, but what's interesting is, um. A Roman slash Greek, uh, well, at least it's got both Roman and Greek gods in its city, right outside of Egypt in the Mediterranean was found. I don't know if you you, you heard about that. Just recently, in the past oh. uh, the decade, and uh, they under the water there is these Roman statues and everything else. And that tells you something, at least. It tells you that whatever the cataclysmic events that have happened. Uh, that there's more going on than uh, we've been told. Because uh, first of all, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, if we have if we have all these uh, these structures throughout the world, for some's really close to where you live, um, and uh, the Gulf and in the Atlantic of uh, canals and and temples and all that under the water, and then outside of Egypt itself, it tells me that. If you got Roman gods sunken in the Mediterranean, uh, no matter there's 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 no record that we have of an earthquake that sunk a a big chunk of uh, the land, uh, mile you know, causing the the, uh, the ghosts to sink, you know. Well, it was way really wide. Whenever whenever those two continents went down into the mantle of the earth, the, the cataclysm was so great, there was only a few survivors. I mean, well, what, what it, I'm it, it so getting at is that whenever you have something of that kind of magnitude, it's not just a regional thing. Uh, if, if a big chunk of uh, the earth sinks into the ocean, it's going to affect everything all, all throughout the world that we live in. So it's just not going to be a regional thing. It's just it's, My point being is that as far as our recorded history, we have no example of it. So, I'm trying to use you know the scientific method, the best that we can do is part of it is observ- ob- ob- observable and repeatable um, information. That and so <clears throat> there's there's a lot of folks out there who are starting to realize that there have been uh, multiple cataclys- cataclysms in this realm that we live in, and that uh, the you know. The Moo books, you know, that maybe now uh, okay. Uh, there's going to be a lot of folks, you know, like we talk about Church Word, you know, his connections and that he knew some some of the interesting esoteric writers of his day. Um, and I guess he had some kind of connections, uh, or at least support from folks like Madame Helena Pavlovsky and Scott Elliott and. Rudolf Steiner and that kind of stuff. So, um, 
for better or worse, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, if you make up those names, uh, well, you're going to be demonized for saying that, especially with the, um, for uh, a lot of folks who call themselves Christians. I was one of those people, by the way. Um, and there's there's reasons, too. You know, if you look at the UN and they're all the machinations that they're all involved with and how they're stirring the world and to their own agenda. But at the same token, there are still those who had had the quest to try to understand their world to the best of their ability. So, uh, yeah, what, the whole story is, is the best we could do is, is, as men is to put the pieces together. It's interesting, this whole idea of this kind of androgynous or hermaphic amorphodite type being, angelic being, and the quest to bring that would that be in. that would be that would be only Adam. Uh, right. You know, Adam. You... I mean, there's a there's a there's a one person that's missing that was of that type, and that's Lilith. We don't know what happened to Lilith. Well, yeah. Uh, there's if, Lilith, Lilith, Lilith. If, 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 if Lilith if Lilith didn't die. At someone's hand, she would not die a natural death. Well, sometimes so. One may wonder: uh, uh, Are you Roman Catholic? I never asked. Are you Roman Catholic? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, so then I, I can't. I want to offend you for bringing this up. Uh, like uh, Mary, is Mary just a symbol of Lilith, uh, Athena? Um, who is Athena? You know all these. You know this, and uh, the Queen of Heaven. Uh, who knows? So these are all. Well, Lilith, Lilith might have perished. Lilith might have perished in the cataclysm. You know, you could be killed, but you wouldn't die naturally. Uh, right. If you were, uh, yeah. Uh, that, there's a lot of possibilities there because there's no mention of Lilith from that yeah, point I, on. You know, from her dismissal. And she she had no reason to die a natural death. She could live on until right now if if she didn't die some other way, you know. Well, there's there's also the argument out there or the speculation that the, you know um, that there was two races of beings that were ended up being created, and that Lilith was part of one, the blonde line, and 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 uh, Eve was another part. Of, I mean, I don't know how you prove any of that, but there's people throw that out there. Um, well, he, he, Adam, Adam blamed the woman, you know, immediately when they talked about their their, their misadventure there in, in eating of the apple, uh, which is allegorical story. But uh, Adam was, when he says, the woman you gave me made me do this, he wasn't referring to that she talked him into it. He's, re- he's referring to the fact that you took, I can't make a good decision anymore, you know, <laughs> because you took the woman from me. I don't have estrogen to balance testosterone, oh, so okay. I make bad decisions now. You know, uh, that's what he was talking about, that the woman that you created from my rib, when you did that, I, now I can't do nothing right. You know, uh, I thought you were talking about uh, how yeah, guys like me, that every bad decision I ever made was because of a woman, so. <laughs> well, it, it's it's that we can't make the god the godly decisions that are that are tempered with with uh, the, the 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 other the other side, you know, the female side. Right. So we 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 tend to be a little more full of hubris and and uh, and and we 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 are impulsive. You know, we're the testosterone driven now, where Adam didn't used to be. He didn't use to say, and he knew the difference, and and that's why he complained to God. He's, but if God wouldn't accept his excuse because he's the one who insisted on. It. Uh, so, uh, so he, but he tried to say, well, the woman that you made for me has caused this. Has brought. I wouldn't have eaten that apple. I would. I'd have had a made a better decision. Uh, and that's what he was telling God. Uh, All right. Well, <laughs> so he knew that he had he had lost something very precious, but he got he got what he asked for an animal style life, uh, where he was no longer an angelic expression. 
Right. So, so the, the whole redemption of man is to bring man back into that balance again. That's the whole thing. The you know uh, the redemption of all things. The restoration of all things, I believe, the Apostle Paul said, the restoration, which is to bring it back like it was. Well, you know, this this brings me to this thing that's going on in our present day about singularity and transhumanization, um, transhumanism, excuse me, and this whole effort that uh, many of the folks out there that uh, may have that kind of leaning or there's a, a desire, an impulse in them the, to actually uh, do what, exactly what you said, since it's not happening the way uh, they want it to happen soon enough, we're going to make it our uh, ourselves. And you see what's going on right now with uh, uh, transgenderism and the... Uh, uh, so well, there's a really serious yeah, thing that's going on right now with the ruling elite, and you'll find a lot of the people that uh, that are out there uh, in the power structure that are pushing the whole thing of... Um, uh, mm-hmm. All sorts of things, you know. There's with the, just hormone therapy. Um, you, you'd be surprised how many people out there. You'd be very surprised. I was since I started to research on it. How many guys and gals that you think? How many guys you think that are real guys, but are actually started out as girls, as women, young girls, and vice versa? And they are trying to blur the line all the way around, type of thing and make it more acceptable for whatever reasons. Now, there's talk no, about... It's, it's just, just mass, mass confusion. It's, it's, a lot of people are very confused about who they are. Uh, that, that's this, this cutting, cut down the middle thing, you know, with testosterone and estrogen is not precise. It wasn't even the way it was supposed to be. You know, so it, it's a temporary arrangement brought about by request. Uh, from from Adam to God, and he he obliged him, but he knew what it, in his great wisdom knew it would turn out badly. So he uh, he made uh, you know, arrangements for redemption at some point in time, and 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 so people are confused. Uh, you know, uh, imagine how Adam felt. You know, when he was part woman, part man, and then all of a sudden he's all man. Uh, He's all testosterone. Uh, probably a little harder to get along with. Makes impulsive decisions. Uh, irrational. And, and worse than that, he ages. Which he never did before. So, uh, yeah, he blamed he blamed the woman. He didn't blame the woman herself. He blamed the act of creating the woman. Brought him into that condition. Uh which is a cop-out because that's where he wanted to be in the first place. But he was warned. He did it with full knowledge. So uh, it's, it's, it's when it says Adam sold us all into slavery, um, you know, we're, we're, we're slaves of our own condition. We, we don't know how. We don't know how to behave. The men, the men dominate women, and the men make lines in the sand and say, don't step across this line or I'll do this to you, all of that was non-existent, you know, it went in, in a perfect balanced world. Uh, and even in the, in the, the talk about Mu, the Mu, Mu never experienced a war of any kind. Uh, it, Adam just didn't become like that, like we are, instantly. Uh, he lived a long time, you know, but we, it, as generations went by, it got worse, the imbalances got worse and worse and worse. You know, now now we don't live very long. Well, that's for sure. We don't live very long. <laughs> Although sometimes it feels like we live too long, especially if you if you get sick or ill, then it feels like forever. But Yeah, things aren't going good yet. 
and you look at the walk. Imagine, in. imagine, imagine. You know, uh, where where nobody did did have that domineering testosterone driven uh, setup. You know, where everything was in balance. People weren't didn't get sick. They didn't. The uh, the you know the things that we experience now when that cataclysm. That we still suffer from the effects of that big geomagnetic cataclysm. Uh, so the, the Earth itself is not anything like it was prior to that. It's uh, the, it, it affected everything. It affected the weather. It affected everything. It, it, we have mountains that were not there prior to that. You know, it, it was so violent that most people died. It was hardly anybody, just a few that lived through it. So you know, yeah. it's a all of, all of these stories have a common origin in reality, uh, and there's, there's there you see all of these different symbols, you see all of these different words that are common to cult, different cultures all over the earth. You know, uh, so like the word con, the word con is is in cultures all over the earth, and it means the same thing in all of them. You know. That tells if you're thinking first, you think, well, that, it must have had a, a root uh, or a very you know, a foundational type of, of culture that started it all. Uh, do the math, the, just do mathematics, and it'll take you back to two individuals, and to one individual, actually. Uh, so, you know, yeah, it. it we, we are uh, we are a a society with amnesia. Yes, you bring that. To, yeah, I've heard this now. You mentioned several times uh, in your videos. It was a great, a great phrase. Great. Where did you get that from? Is it your original one, or is that from? No, no, no. It's it's from Graham Hancock. Okay, for a okay. Great Graham <laughs> Hancock, a, a great researcher. Uh, you know. He, he started out just being a journalist and he, in his travels, he kept seeing things that indicated that the same people were here that was over there, you know, in some ancient time. And he began to search for explanations for it, became a, a, a great untangler of, of mysteries. Uh, you know, so uh, I owe that phrase to him and, uh, and I owe a debt of you know, gratitude for sharing his knowledge. Right. Some people learn it, but they don't share it. Well, you know, it, it's, you're treading on dangerous ground when you do, uh, especially when you start threatening the official paradigm, which is, leads me to a question to ask you. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of folks out there, um, I know this certainly, and one time I was one of those folks that... Uh, would this, you know, be screaming heretic, heretic, blasphemer, twisting the Bible, twisting the Word of God, all this kind of stuff. So, and you know, oh, lots of folks are there would say, you know, combining the uh, different uh, narratives out there, whether it's along with the Bible, would would uh, well, they give you a hard the time. Bible, the Bible, the Bible is the most the most important. Work book ever written, uh, you know, uh, it 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 has within its pages the answers to most of the questions that people ask, but they're not always that clear, you know. And sometimes other works do do help along with the Bible explain in a better way, you know, the early stages of man's development. You know, the back in those in the very ancient of times. Uh, it's very clear that the Bible and the Sumerian text and some other texts, ancient texts, have the same source material. They tell the same story. So it, it, you, you know that it came, it had to come in a common way to all of those people. And in, in, for whatever reason, for geographical separations or whatever, then it, it may vary somewhat, but not a lot. You know, it, it is it is God's word. So, uh, gosh, where do I go from here? 
there's so many things to go down this road and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, well, I guess, um, well, th- you can't tell me that you haven't had this experience if you've, well, maybe you can tell me, but I know that I would have had this experience and have had it and experienced it. So it's like, you know, you know, connecting the Moo books with the, um, the 66 books of what we know is the Bible, a lot of people would get really angry with you if you had some negative, uh, say, pullback, pushback, I should say is a better way of saying it. Of, well, um, I, have, I haven't had any. Most people that I've spoken with about it were kind of glad to learn, you know, some explanations for things they've always wondered about. You know, you can take the symbols of Booth and translate those Western petroglyphs out in the, uh, the North American West um, and, and, and get the true story of what the, the person was talking about. And they're, they're, most of them are religious. Some of them are not. But most of them are religious. And they say things that are identical or in harmony with the Bible. Uh, I read one, and it talked about the first man and the first woman. And it talked about, if you, it, if you see, if I, one, was, one just simply stated that, that all people go upwards. <laughs> you know, very simple petroglyph, it just said all people go up, upwards. Right. Uh, so, so, you know, I, I, I'm appreciative of the fact that I have a, I, I can understand what these ancient people were doing. They, they weren't doodling. You know, they were telling about their beliefs and their lives. It just, it just long ago, long time ago, you know, and, and of course they get wiped out or either they were gone, long gone, we got here as Europeans and, and, and we don't know what doodly squat of what, <laughs> what we think. You know, most people think that's just doodling, you know, a simple mind and they, they drew a picture of a deer. What what's the deer? What makes the why why draw a picture of a deer? Well, a, a standing deer, if he's standing on two legs, it, it means first man. Uh, that's in the the Nikal text in uh, Sri Lanka. Standing deer, which is K I I T, or K, you can call it K E E. Uh, it means first man. Standing deer without antlers means first woman. You know, uh, I, I read one not too long ago. They had a spiral. You know the spiral that they put on rocks? They chisel, chisel them out in the rocks. Sure. Uh, if, you, if, you're, if your spiral opens from the left to the left side, uh, you can enter the spiral from the left. It means to come. If you... If the spiral opens to the right, it needs to go. You wouldn't believe just knowing that will open up a lot of pictures of this. Oh, that's interesting. If, if you ha- is there any connection? You have with, a, is there any connection with uh, uh, the left left hand path and the right hand path? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Okay, uh, it's, I, I know it's, 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 if you go to the left, you go to the left. It's going to be a left hand path, and you go to the right, it's going to be a right hand path. So, one is to come and one is to go. So that's interesting in its own right. So, um, come and go is all I know that it means. Uh, if there's a if there's a wavy line and it's horizontal, it means water. But if that wavy line is at an angle or straight down, it means God's creative force as applied to man. So. If you can see, uh, if you see a round circle with another circle in it, that's God, or a round circle with a dot in it, that's God. And if, if okay, then if next to it you see the spiral that opens to the left, and then you see a wavy line going down, and then there is a standing deer, it means that the first man came from God through his creative powers. So, uh, those, it, to me, it's, it's, uh, it's enlightening, you know, 
to be able to read what those ancient people were talking about. They they had the same, very same type of belief. They tell the same story of creation. Uh, it, it, it doesn't very much from, from what you would get in the Bible. Uh, it had it had that same setup with the uh, with the two deer. One was a woman, one was a man. But it was the story of Adam and Lilith, not Adam and Eve, because they put genitals, male genitals, on the standing deer that was a woman, and they put no antlers on the standing deer of the other one that, that was a male. You know, uh, so it, what it was saying was that that they were they were co-equal. That's what they were saying. That Adam and, and Lilith were co-equal. And so that the story of Lilith is used to be part of the Bible. But they in the in the Council of Nicaea in 400 A.D. they took it out. They took a lot of things out, didn't they? They took a whole wonder, bunch of things. Uh, they they, they streamlined religion is what they did. Well, it makes you wonder about a lot of things. Because, like, uh, I don't know if I said this already to you, but one of the things that I find fascinating when it comes to, when it comes to numbers, like, well, the very first chapter of Genesis, God is mentioned 33 times. Genesis and Geometry means 33. Why did they choose only 66 books? Um, what would you find in between the in the very middle of those 66 books. Um, it goes on and on and on. And so uh, my theory at this point is, after studying the Bible and studying other things, is that, uh, well, you know, when they were given us what is the way known as the King James Version of the Bible, um, in the very first King James Bible, I don't know if you've ever seen the original any like uh, pictures of it? Uh, it's full of uh, the Brotherhood, you know, Freemasonry, symbolism, and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty much wink, wink type of thing. Which tells me is that you know there's certain levels of knowledge that's going to be uh, granted to folks, as it always was in the mystery schools. Uh, <laughs> That's why they're mystery schools. Uh, if, you, if you want to, if you want to go afoul of that uh, in those days, all you had to do was ask a few questions, and you'd find yourself in a heap of trouble. You'd be down in the dungeon with the man in iron mask. I know <laughs> you would. You would. It's true. It's, 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 a, it's a different time now. Where we're allowed to ask to ask these questions, whereas before, uh, well, the average person. Well, the fact of the matter is, the average person who calls himself a Christian hasn't ever really studied the Bible. They've only read it, or they were taught how to, you know, this whole idea of, like, read the Bible, the whole Bible in one year type of program, or in six months, and that's not how you have to study this. This book has so many... Hey, here's, a, here's a great thing leading back to cryptos, cryptozoal, uh, the cryptides and cryptozoology in this whole thing about Esau... And Jacob, Esau, you know, is this hairy comes out of his mom, and what does he look like? He's Remember? so hairy that a that a goat skin fooled his his uh, his dad. He was going blind; he couldn't see. He was going to bless Esau, and uh, Jacob put a goat skin over his arm and stuck his arm out there, and he felt them and thought he was Esau, and gave him the blessing instead. <laughs> That's how hairy Esau was. <laughs> and uh, we read that, and we just go past it and say, "Oh well." No, 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 no. Wait a minute! You should stop. You go, "What? <laughs> <laughs> what are they really trying to convey here? Is it really yeah, well, there's a lot, that's, based, that's, based, based there's on a... observable and repeatable uh, experimentation and data? Have you ever heard?" Of any woman in your life that has had two children, and one turning out to be red and covered like basically Bigfoot, and the other one looking like us, and the well, I'll answer that question for you. No. So, what is it actually saying here? And who was, you know, who were these folks? I mean, there's strong suggestions that, well, for better for better or worse, uh, Abraham. Is a scrambling of what? 
Brahma and that Sarah is the name of a river in India. I, I can't prove any of this. But what I can say is that story right there should make you wake up and say, and not necessarily say it's all garbage, but to say they're trying to tell us something here that's beyond what you're going to learn in Sunday school. Yeah, it's, it's masterfully written, and there's allegory throughout the Bible. Uh, you know, uh, there are four different words that that are translated in the King James Version as hell, and they have nothing to do with each other. That's true. <laughs> you know, but but they all but they confuse it confuses people. Well, if you go look them up, you can get a better understanding. Uh, Tartarus. It, Greek word, it meant death's darkness. Uh, Hades, uh, the grave. Uh, Sheol meant the grave, and there's something else. Uh, what, what's the other one? Uh, one of them meant a garbage dump. Was it outside wasn't Jerusalem? It, wasn't that Sheol? Oh, Gehenna. Ge- oh, Gehenna. 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 Yeah, that's a garbage dump outside Jerusalem that they burned garbage almost 24-7, and they they would take uh, people who who were stoned to death and considered to be the lowest of the low and just throw their bodies into the fire and just let them burn. They wouldn't bury them. And, and that's where the allegory of, 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 of eternal torture comes from. Jesus spoke to the uh, Pharisees. He, they knew what he was talking about. He said, you're going to be liable to the fires of Gehenna. Which meant they were going to be just burned from doing total destruction. And then it turned out to be uh, uh, 40 years later. That's exactly what happened. So, Yeah, the, but he was warning them. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but he, you know, they, the Bible says that you're going to go to hell. Well, now, now hell means one thing to people who don't know those words. It means uh, a place the devil's tormenting you, and he was telling them they were going to go to the devil, and they was going to torment them. But no, he was he was referring to an actual place right outside Jerusalem, the the Valley of Gehenna, where they burnt, they kept that fire going all the time, and that's the eternal part of it. It burned twenty four seven. It's fascinating that how many people at, actually did in that generation end up in that place, figuratively, oh, no, no, symbolically. No, no tell that many. Well, the numbers are, yeah. if you could trust the numbers from Josephus, it's uh, anywhere from 1.2 million people died in the sacking of Jerusalem, in which most of the people, the vast majority of them, were died at each other's hands. And things got so bad by the time the Romans got during the, yeah, the during, city. During the siege. Yeah. Uh, but the, you know, they they could have they could have found terms, but they were it was hubris. You know, they had yeah. abandoned godly ways of living and they were taken over by leaders who were, you know, very, you know, uh, cocky, I guess, or whatever. They just didn't think that they could be taken. Oh yeah, and why, why would they? And they, they just put, they, they yeah, pushed things they? until until it was it was too. When they just, when they finally did breach and come in, well, the first thing they did was to throw diseased carcasses over there. They would they would hurl them over the wall. That's one thing, but it was even worse and, though. And, was the fact that uh, the Jews themselves they had uh, fighting factions that end up bur- this. The the grain and food supplies apparently had enough alleged food storage to last them fifty years, not last any siege, and they burned it all up, and to, to force people to join sides. And in the process, the vast majority of the people in Jerusalem starved to death, or were pre- preyed upon. Uh, well, I know that's, that's, that's when it. Yeah, yeah, that's why I was gonna say it got bad enough that women I mean, mothers ate their own infants. Yeah. You know, it's horrible. And they know this to be true and this is one of the things they've done to the masses many of times. You find this in you yeah, 
over and over again. So it's uh, yeah. force you to take sides by removing all your resources. That's what they do. Exactly what they do. That's what they've always done. Spanish, the Spanish did that whenever they came here. Uh, you know, uh, I forgot who was who was the, the Spanish that attacked the Aztec. What was his name? Was it Pizarro? Uh, uh, whoever it was, whoever it was, they Spanish. the the men the men did not want to do it because they were outnumbered by the Aztecs pretty badly. So he went out there and set the boat on fire. And then it says, you want to fight or you want to just die? <laughs> they didn't have any choice but to fight. They couldn't go back to Spain. So, yeah, yeah, that that kind of thing is a, you can make a person, force a person into a position or something. Uh, so that goes back to, uh, you know, Adam, you know, uh, uh, the imbalance. You know, the are, you talking about, are you talking about Cortez? It might be Cortez, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It might, it might be. I don't say that it is, but that's. Uh, well, I, it sounds, it sounds like it is. Okay. Uh, but that's yeah, cool. yeah. They, they, he just burned the boat up. He solved that problem that right quick. Well, and that's what he they've said, always well, done. And, and you see what's happened. The same thing happened in uh, Russia, World War Two, uh, between the Bolshevik Revolution and. Leading up to World War Two, they shipped all the food and grain over to Germany, and uh, nothing is what people think. I mean, this is this has been uh, some form or another of eugenics has been going on for you know thousands of years. And anybody who knows anything about warfare and conquering and a nation, one of the most important things is to uh, uh, sanctions. You know create sanctions and uh, on them and cause them to weaken as a populace before you even... There's, there's no point of going right in when they're full strength. You weaken them morally and physically, and then it's much easier to actually just take them over. So, well, find example, like I said, uh, the, the, the redemption of man is the theme throughout the Bible, and, and uh, it, it's, it's not the entire thing. It's not, it's not the full thing of the Bible. But it's a it's a major theme of Bible, and 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 the restoration of all things. And so, if you can imagine that you're back as a a, a complete person, you're the, you're like Adam was. So, well, there's that 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 desire to want to hurt your fellow man is not there anymore. You know uh, that you have it you have it tempered with a balance chemical balance uh, so that you're not driven entirely by testosterone, you're not driven entirely by estrogen, but the two together, uh, you, your in, inner self is a very complete. So, Wait, you, know, you know what you know, that these. sounds like? You know what that sounds like? That sounds like a, a middle-aged man is what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it may, be, it may oh, actually, yeah. you know, have something to do with the with the shifting, you know, the dominance. Uh, well, you and I but, both. Know, we remember what it was like being young men and testosterone dominated. And now that you get older, oh, you absolutely, get, absolutely, you 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 find something to get into. Uh, oh. <laughs> but, you know, it's <laughs> but but the Bible very very uh, I say patiently uh, tells you what's wrong today and it tells you what the hope for the future is you know uh you could imagine that now if you're god and you just have surgically changed adam and he's he's entirely testosterone driven and you've given him eve well you realize they can die now if either one of them die in the next two or three weeks or months or years or 20 years, that the whole human race could die out because, you know, in, in other words, they had to have offspring at a feverish pace to, to, to even preserve the, the humanity at all. So, so what, 
Adam had to go right at producing children, and Eve had to go right at getting pregnant and stay that way for for as long as possible to get the largest, you know, uh, family going they could get, clan, family. Uh, and, and then their offspring would have to be just as feverishly doing it. Right. Well, when you're and, young and man, even that, that, when you're a young man, that sounds a lot more fun than it is. Isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, well, Adam stayed young for what seven or eight hundred years. Well, he needed to to produce that many. <laughs> <laughs> that takes a lot of stamina. So, you you got to make sure your plumbing and everything's working for a long time, or else you're not going to be have much success as you get to be middle age. Well, he 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 absolutely got what he asked for. He sure did, didn't he? He got I, you, know, what he asked for. you know, and what do you do about the whole thing? Do you, do you, you blame the poor guy for everything that he, or do you say, you know, it is what it is, and this is what we we are dealing with? But uh, well, I well, you have hope. I mean, you have, you have hope, and that's what you. That's kind of what the, what the thing the Bible is about is that there's hope that the yeah. that there will be an equ- equitable solution. And that will be will plan A that was originally uh, will return and and, and will will be a part of, and plan B will go you know uh, go by the wayside. But we're on plan B right now. I mean this this was never supposed to happen. But uh, yeah, I wonder, I wonder if uh, the hairy fellow in the woods knows that. I wonder if he's, if he's like I, hiding behind that tree and he's looking at us and going, you know, this was never supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you could, it could be, I guess, but I don't know what his role is. You know, and that, that's part of, you know, uh, the. Well, this uh, goes back I to think Esau. We're, we're all curious. This goes back it to could Esau. Be Esau. I, I don't know. It could be the offspring of Esau. Well, no, obviously, we, I can't say that, but, you know, I, I, I don't know for certain, but, you know, there's. These suggestions out there, and uh, you know how science is, is always in flux and changing, so don't put too much faith in dates or numbers and all that kind of thing, but they give you some kind of idea. The one of the things is the whole idea that uh, Neanderthal or something, some characters similar to it, were, you know, were having sexual relationships one or the other uh, with people of Asia Minor in the Middle East. And this could be part of that story um, that we're talking about here, you know, this whole symbolic thing that there was basically, you know, this is not what leads into the Canaanites and all that kind of stuff and who were the Canaanites and what was such a big deal about them and why were they so big and why were they so ferocious and, you know. Um, and yeah, they were, like, they were like totally ungodly people. I mean, they had no interest in worshiping God or learning anything. They were like, you know, they were they were just hard to get along with. You couldn't get along. All right. They so what? About, what's, they would kill you. <laughs> you, know, you know, you could say, well, you know, I mean, there's. It's not like there's uh, a bunch of hell's angel dudes here. No, it was something different going on. And oh, well, they were Anakin. They were Anakin. Anakin were giants. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Joshua and Caleb came back and reported that they have the people down there the, that were like grasshoppers compared to them. <laughs> and part of that thing, uh, too, you know, you look at, like, uh, <laughs> the traditions of Asia, if it's true or not. I mean, it's hard to verify it completely, but, uh, you know, that, that the... Uh, the people of the woods, the hairy people there in Asia and all that, apparently is was tradition of capturing them and uh, making them slaves and sex slaves and all that kind of thing. And I guess for some way of uh, uh, the male human and of these females, uh, these hairy people, you know, what we know as Bigfoot or the variants thereof, uh, that uh, I guess could produce offspring. Um, now we go back to Esau, and you have to ask yourself a question, what was the possibility... That the, you know the, the mom would produce two type of children, basically one that's really good in hunting and and you know hairy from head to toe. And uh, now we all know somebody's pretty hairy. 
And no matter the hair, it, though. yeah, but from, usually that that hair trans goes from the, the the head to the to the toe. You know what I mean? There's no more hair on top of the head. <laughs> Where the you know what I mean? <laughs> what I'm saying is, I don't know. I don't know any human beings that that are as hairy as what we're talking about with Esau. And so there's a reason why it was brought into that this story. When the question is, why did they bring that into the story? Because it didn't. Why bring that part of it in? Of all the things to bring in, what would that be so important? <laughs> well, the Bible don't waste words. I'm here to tell you that. It, it, it was there for a reason. That, oh. that, if, 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 that, if the hairiness of Esau was mentioned, it was important. Yeah. And it was more than just the fact that uh, Jacob, you know, uh, being a little leg, a little hair gra- grabber that he was, um, you know, duked his ma- his dad and got, you know, stole the inheritance. There's more to it than that. You know, the whole thing it's is... Got to do, it's, it, uh, that's got to do with lineages that lead to Jesus, lead to Christ. Sure, uh, the science. It, it, the, the whole the whole gist of it is that that God it was a God it was a godly direction that brought all of those things. You know, they, he, he came through the line of David. Uh, you know, he he came from Abraham, a promise to Abraham that the Christ would come through his his lineage. Uh, so uh, Esau and Jacob were splitting. And Jesus came through Jacob's lineage, not Esau's. Esau's, the, well, who have, whatever, yeah, whatever. But the same, who is that? See, this is the thing. It's like, we can't, you know, there's a lot, had of to, he had, he, a lot of speculation. He, he, had to, he had to steal it. He had to steal it. Right. He had, he had to steal it from the Harry. Yeah, the Harry fell. He had to steal from the Harry fell. What does that mean, you know? So yeah, here I'm we sure go. It means something. <laughs> well, the only thing we could do at this point is, you know, compare notes and, you know, it could be nothing more than speculation, suggestion, and simply, at this stage, it probably is, but, well, the, what what do we know that's, that is physically superior to us, it's a bipedal, it's a, a the hunter when it comes to the forest, you can bring back the game for a daddy, and actually has caused, if anything, any kind of challenge to what we call homo sapiens. I mean, that's, there seems to be... And people try to say that, well, you know, the descendants of Esau or the the Muslims or this or that, well, you can't prove any of that. You can't. You can, and there's a lot of people, no, even, even the Muslims, the Muslims believe that, and they can't even prove that. The problem is they can't prove it. There's no way of proving it. It's just... You believe, a lot of belief systems are based on the twisting of old stories. So, <clears throat> what is it? But it's, it's 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 an old it's a story that's there for a reason, and you know we don't have that that explanation. But you know the description is very much like you would describe a Sasquatch. Yeah, you know, in, a, in, a, in, a, in appearance. A heck of a lot so, more so than this whole thing that all these people are pushing as far as the. Nephilim agenda, and I'm not saying there weren't Nephilims, and I'm not saying, uh, but the, the 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 byproduct of Nephilims and uh, the fallen ones, and they don't they don't add up to Bigfoot. I'm sorry, no matter how hard you try, they're not going to add up to a big hairy guy walking in the forest. It just doesn't add up. So the only thing we have of any example of such things, um. It comes close to Esau, and then comes to the Canaanites and some kind of crossbreeding that was going on, where they enjoyed eating people as well. So <laughs> I don't know. I know that they, you know, they had the giants prior to the flood, but they, they had them again after the flood, uh, and they were all destroyed in the flood. So whatever brought the giants to the earth the first time brought them back the second time. It, uh, the same mechanism. They, uh, they because they they said that the Anakim was the, which Goliath I think was an Anakim, 
Uh, Goliath, I think, what was nine feet something? Over nine feet. Can you well, imagine that? Actually, it's it's from what they say is based on what his his length of his bed, which was thirteen feet. That it was probably more than nine feet. So I don't know. We're talking based well, on that big old box, that's, big that's, old Sasquatch, a male a male Sasquatch. We're talking about here, aren't we? <laughs> put <laughs> put put him in armor with a big old pike, the size that we could pierce three men with it at one go. Uh, what do you got? Got something. Well, he was so he was so bad that the whole entire Israeli army did not want to go meet him. You know, it ended up just being David with a sling. The whole army cowered from that guy. If you think about something that's over nine feet tall, would I mean, would you want to? Uh, he could do a lot of damage. Have I got you? Are you there? I th- oh, there. I thought I Hello? had. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I thought I unmuted it. I'm sorry. Yeah, so think about all the the, the present day documentations of these Harry Fell. Think about Patty, you know, and the PJ films that you've been working on. She's big. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> I, mean, you know, I consider she'll go over uh, a 1,000 pounds. So, yeah, if you were seeing a guy that was 12, 13 feet uh, tall, I mean, most people, when they see, those who say they that they have, they swear they've seen the big fella, it's traumatized them, scared of them. They talk about things of, well, I never went back into the woods, or it took me six months or a year to go back in the woods, or I would never leave the house without somebody with me, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. You know, it's that's one thing if you see a bear, you know what I mean? Yeah, but there's another thing when you apparently see this thing, whatever they call it, Bigfoot or it's or all its different forms, it's, it scares the living dookie out of you. So you can only imagine if it had enough intelligence and was taught to war, our, our, human warfare. I mean, just think about the way these things move from your own documentation. These things uh, move incomprehensibly. Can you imagine one of them going through uh, the battlefield back then? They'd probably take out hundreds of men in just in a few minutes because most men wouldn't be able to keep up with what just happened to them. Most of us can't even keep track well, of it. He stood down the whole the whole uh, Jewish army that none of them wanted to want to have no part of him. Uh, so it ended up just David. Uh, you know, that's one of the remarkable things about the story is that, you know, a, a young boy took, took him down with faith and courage. So, you know, uh, that's, that's kind of the uh, elements of the story. And it also has to do with lineage, too, because uh, David was from the lineage, proper lineage, uh, Jacob's lineage. And and so the Christ came through David's lineage. That lineage was uh, was carefully, uh, I say, guided all the way down through the ages until Jesus was born. They made sure that it came, it, it came through that the promises made were kept. And then there's the argument of a pure uh, bloodline. And then there's right, the- right. You hear a lot about that. You hear a lot about that these days. And here's the other thing about these. Uh, if Esau was some kind of Bigfoot thing, then <clears throat> or a mix of some kind of Bigfoot foot, foot thing, there's the possibility that on the Ark there were those things that came went on the Ark along with the everything else, right? In one way or the other, however they did it, you know, whether it was literally a wooden ship, bit ship, or, or what not, you know, or if it was a, uh, you know, so could they survive and could they? You know, just think about it. If you were Noah and his, his lineage, and you had these beasts, uh, a burden, and then they were, they'd be great beasts to burden, wouldn't they, as far as building and everything? And then, of course, it could be this whole, and, and just all speculation. It's just my, my imagination running. But why not? You know, then you got uh, 
you know, because they're, they're beasts of burden, and we know how, there's a lot of sickos out there that, uh, you know, they'll you know, dip their honey, their, their stinger in anything they can possibly get it, it in, so. Well, you know, the, 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 the Bible doesn't. It only, it only deals with, like, certain things. Uh, the, 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 the redemption of men, of, of man, uh, the kingdom of God, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and there's a lot that's that kind of in the periphery that doesn't get a lot of explanation. And, and, you know, and I guess, you know, those things are a matter of faith, you know, as to, you know, that they did occur. So you don't really have the explanation, but you know that they did. You kind of take it at face value. Well, yeah. Yes, sir. And then there's always the question, are there not sacred texts that talk about these things? And more detail that they, uh, for whatever reason, decided to keep from the general masses for whatever, you know. you know. Well, let's face it, if you had, you know, the Indians have folklore of it, you've done research about the fact that uh, there was some kind of um, potential intermingling, breeding with the the men of the forest, uh, maybe this is an issue. If we look at um, the Love Love Caves and the skull that you see and then there's witness the photos of it. Yeah. You know, this this is, uh, uh, these are fellows that weren't to be taken lightly. <laughs> and who knows? Well, I mean, the, the, Indian, the Indian stories, they didn't take them lightly because they were the recipients. Uh, of the uh, of the red haired giants uh, 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 hunger, you know they would they would actually kill the, the Paiutes and eat them. And the Paiutes said that they just it came down to us and them, and they they banded together with uh, several other tribes, and then they, they had like a coalition like Desert Storm, and it took them. It didn't happen overnight. It took them a while, but they. They got them down to manageable numbers, and they, they, they were on a reed platform floating out in the, in the lake, Lake Lohentown. Now, reed platforms, boats made of reeds are typically uh, like Middle Eastern, like, like Egypt on the Nile. Uh-huh. And there's also reed boats down in Lake Titicaca. Okay, uh, uh, that that kind of indicates there that there's some kind of connection, you know, on a more cosmopolitan scale uh, with these uh, red-haired giants and uh, possibly Polynesia uh, because that skull had the characteristics of a Polynesian. Uh, even though it was large, it had the, the, what they call the rocker jaw, and the, the shape of the head was like a, if you look at it from the rear, it looked like a pentagon. Uh, which is known uh, Polynesian traits. So the next question is, and it goes unanswered, is what's a Poly- Polynesian skull, large or not large, doing in northern Nevada? You know, way back when. Yeah, it's just a darn good question. Now, it, it, doesn't, well, the, the, it doesn't fit with the Eurocentric, Eurocentric uh, perspective of history, does it? It's a, uh, you know. No, no. Of, I think it makes it makes the uh, history uh, teachers and the history compilers uh, very nervous when they find something like that. It's it, it's re- rather than try to explain this one out of place skull, they could been better off just to smash it. You know, uh, then they don't have to explain anything. Right. Lots of questions, lots of questions. And, you know, who would have thought that we would be going down the avenue that we went down today in this show? Um, I really enjoy talking to you, MK. There's a lot of things to talk about now, isn't there? Uh, oh, yeah, certainly. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mu, um, the story of Esau, um, just the, just so many things here. Um, 
I will put a lot of stuff in the information box for people to uh, do some research on their own. And uh, hopefully we do this again soon. I'm enjoying this, so uh, I don't know if you've if you got the time to do another one next week. I'm game for it if you are. Um, let's well, make a series. If you want to do it, we'll go. Yeah, yeah let's make a series out of it, you know. There's so much to talk to you about, MK, from uh, your work. I mean, we didn't even get close. I mean, I was here, I'm looking, going over your, your uh, Davis reports and all the things I wanted to talk about, and we didn't touch any of it. So <laughs> then there's the... Uh, some of the stuff that even in your, your YouTube channel and then the amount of articles that have been written about you, uh, pro and con, and those are things that are very interesting to talk about. Plus, and then once again, you know, about ancient history and how all this ties in, you know, I'm discovering. Well, it's, 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 it's out there. there. It's out there. Yeah. Well, I'm discovering that the it, Bigfoot, Bigfoot is much bigger than the fellow himself. Much bigger than the fellow himself. So it's uh, what a fascinating journey to go down if you're willing to let yourself go down it. And uh, I, you know, it's like you said to me earlier today, and you said also um, in some of your articles and some of the things you said is that uh, I guess basically, you know, warning or at least the observation that we're many of us are making the mistake of judging what Bigfoot is and uh, based on our own preconceived ideas already. And that, uh, can be, that can be a bit deadly trap. And so instead of, uh, you know, trying to make this, uh, you know, a way of getting attention for ourselves, let's, let's just discover the many, uh, the many mysteries that revolve around not only the subject Bigfoot, but the periphery issues, and uh, and you know, people there'll be the the naysayers and the people that support. But who cares? You know, it's really about the journey. And if you're ever finding somebody that's willing to have this conversation with you, you're pretty lucky. And you know, one of the things that I do, MK, is that one of the reasons I do outside of sharing my journey with people is actually. If I do find somebody who's willing to do recordings like this and is willing to put themselves out in the line is to do it because you know one of the things that I feel is what's missing in our culture today is just this you know the whole idea of sitting around the campfire and listening to adults have these kind of conversations is that uh, the average child today just doesn't have um, their conversations that they witness most of the time come from the television and they're not much of a conversation at all. They're more just a, well, you know, manipulation of their brain and thoughts. So, but they encourage. Well, there's more, there's more to life than just living and dying. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, you got, you got so much time, you know, to, to get, to get fully educated if you want to be that way. And, uh, so you, you go at it. Uh, the information's out there. Other people work hard to get it. Uh, you know, people uh, travel the world over, like like James Churchward. I mean, he was way over there in Sri Lanka, and and was he had to go through a a, a period of education where the Rishi, the priest, taught him how to read those texts. So you realize how much trouble that is. Okay, now he knows how to read them. He he, he reads them and translates. And, and he does this with no pay. There's no pay for it. And no rewards against the grain. Uh, so he's not even, he's not even appreciated at all by his, by his colleagues and peers. Demonized, and, uh, really. He's actually demonized. Right, but, but, he, but, he, but he leaves that. He knows the importance of it is, is, is what you leave behind for other people. Uh, so he left something solid behind that could be worked with, you know, if someone wanted to work with it. And, and you know, that's, that's basically all we can do. Uh, so they, yeah. because he did that, I could translate some petroglyphs in the Southwest and know what they're talking about. Because he did that. He did what he did for free. I translated mine for free. 
you know, uh, and someone else to come along and take what I'm doing and maybe take it a little further. You know, okay. it, so it's it's a knowledge. It's a it's a it's a, a body of knowledge. Uh, it's a it's knowledge about the the very co- cosmic things. You know, the basic wise and what force that we've had amnesia about so long. Yeah, and, and when you get something, a, a little something going, and you realize, hey, this, this explains it. This this tells me something. It's speaking to me. But then there's there's, there's no greater joy than that. You know, there's a connection down through the down through the ages, down through the eons. I I've connected, or you've connected with people far in the past and on into the future. Yeah, absolutely. Part of it also, too, is, you know, uh, the journey of discovery itself, the hunt itself, uh, sometimes is more important and more enjoyable than actually the prey, if you will, or the uh, getting the the absolute to the bottom of it all, you know what I mean? So uh, I I just did an interview. I I don't know if you know Paul Nation. Um, Paul Nation is... Paul Nation, he's known for the Indava bird, his research over in Papua New Guinea um, <clears throat> about you know, the giant kind of like a, a prehistoric dinosaur type bird. Uh, I don't know, whatever. Anyways. Uh, okay, no, I, I don't know. I, I haven't heard of him. We, uh, you know, I decided to go down a different approach because, you know, the knowledge, uh, what if, little information that he has about this uh creature um, and anybody else has is so li- limited and everybody wants to talk to him about the, the creature himself and I'm like you know and I was talking to Paul and I said you know you know what's more interesting about your story it's not the fact that whether or not you find this giant prehistoric bird or not it's the fact that your journey and you hanging out with the Polynesians and all the you know the 800 different languages that are spoken and uh, tribes you know separated by a simple mountain and the fact that you're you're there doing that, and it's like you know, and uh, it, what it means, you know, and the, and the, the many hours of uh, basically being alone in your thoughts and observation, and uh, oh, you know how it is in your Bigfoot research. If you go out in the field, it's it's not about you know, it's not all about like talking and jabbering in a way and socializing. It's about sitting still and observing. Which is something that we have lost. You know, the television has replaced that. Whereas, you know, just a generation or two ago, two generations ago, uh, a vast majority of uh, Americans were doing that. And um, a three generation goes, it was the common thing to do. You know, what we're going to do today? Well, I'm going to go down to the creek and fish, and while I'm at it, I'm just going to enjoy and and observe. You know what I mean? Um, Focusing on your surroundings, it just doesn't. We are we are losing connection to the mystery around us, um, and I think it's by sign. You know, your journey I find fascinating, and it's all right, it's own right, and plus the knowledge that you have acquired in this field of cryptozoology, and then um, just the human experience. What do you you have experienced? So you have a lot to teach. Uh, and although I'm, I'm starting very late in life when uh, it comes to the cryptozoology, it has not been something I've been focusing on. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's maybe, it may be late, but it's not too late. Yeah, and the thing is, maybe it was a good thing for me, too, because I just see the world in a different light. I mean, I'm, I, 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 I like the more holistic approach to the whole question of Bigfoot, whether it's real or not. I'm not so much interested, you know, after a while of hearing all the stories, they still all start sounding the same. It didn't take very long to, for that for me to recognize that. So it's like I'm not denying that people aren't having these encounters, but how many times can you hear about you know you know I looked out my window and there was Bigfoot. You know, what I mean? it's like okay, you know, it's great and it's an interesting story, but what were the after effects? You know, what happened leading up to it? Who is this person? Who who is uh, M.K. Davis? Because this you know. 
that's ultimately what we could relate to the most and uh, learn the most from. So I, I think that's, that's that's not negating the issue of Bigfoot or at all or any of the other, you know, uh, whether it was a Tasmanian tiger, which I find fascinating. If there's anything that I've learned from you that's a higher probability of that critter is still around in it than just about anything. It, it, it is. is. <laughs> it, it, it is. It, it's a good possible. Oh yeah, I don't know. Did you see? Did I end up, end up giving you the right video? Did you see that one, or was it just a guy in Texas? Or did I end up getting the one that was in uh, Maryland or the, the videotape? I, I had a perfect one. I, I, got, I, I got the one in Maryland. The, the crazy looking thing in Maryland. Uh, it was weird that, looking. I don't know if it was a thylacine or not, but it was weird. Yeah, it was. It had a little, it was, uh, like a young one. I don't that, know what that was. <laughs> I don't buy it was mange. I don't think it was a. Uh, when you look at the leg structure and the anatomy of it, and the hump on his back and everything, it looked, and the tail, and there was a better one. That's the one I I can't, I, I don't know how that happened. I found it the night before. Didn't have enough sense to, to to, to save it and um, couldn't find it again. I thought I could find it again, but it just took the thickness of the tail, how long it was. You got a video of a thylacine. Uh, darting behind a house in a garbage can, and you're just like looking at that thing, and it's like, yeah, that's one. Well, you know, it, 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 well, it sure looks like one. So, uh, it's a, uh, it's got, you know, I, I kind of go by the profile, uh, not necessarily the stripes, because the stripes can. There's some examples of thylacines with hardly any stripes. Yeah, but. Uh, I kind of go by the profile, and you look at the tail. There's a what, what I call a rump extension. In other words, the rump itself extends out down the tail uh, right. in a like, almost almost a triangular fashion. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah. that when you get when you get one in profile where you can see that, that's a good indicator. You know, if you don't, if it's too far to see the tail, look for that profile. Right. There was a some, there was something killed back in the 1800s. Uh, uh, a Mormon fellow killed in Mount West. Uh, forgot exactly which state it was, but it was terrorizing the cows and stuff. And he shot it and killed it. They stuffed it. Stayed missing for years, and it showed back up in the uh, University of Idaho, or down in their basements. Uh, and it was they they call it a shunkwara or shunkwara, something like that. Uh, it looked like a hyena, but it had faint stripes on it. Uh, have you ever heard of that? I have not. That's the first one on me. Let's say, let's say the you name might of it Google, Google, Google it. Uh, they, call it a, they call it a wolf-like hy- uh, uh, hyena-like wolf. Uh, shunk, S-U-N-K... R A or W R A, and it and now it's being displayed in a museum. They found it. In, uh, I'm trying to see. Shunka Walrakin, I think I'm. A shank wire? No, that can't be it. I, I you know, I, I, I'm having trouble remembering it. Uh, let me Let's see if I can just uh, Google, Google it. Uh, like a, uh, well, just what hyena? Hyena in museum and try that. Uh, no, I don't see a hit. Well, hold on. They're, they're talking about literal hyenas from Africa. Now, let me make sure I can find a, a keyword. Is it it's like a, is it like a crossbreed of wolf and a hyena? Hyena killed in Idaho. Can we see that? Mystery monster returns home after 121 years. That's it. The Roseman Daily Chronicle. You got a picture of it. The guy's got the original gun that shot it. It was his grandfather that shot it. It's, it's, it's so strange. Uh, it's in Ennis. It's now residing in Ennis, Idaho. 
more than a century ago, a wolf-like creature prowled the Madison Valley killing livestock and living out streams that one account said would leave a person's hair standing on end. A bullet from a Mormon settler's rifle ended the animal's life and triggered stories of the creature that were passed along to generations of family history and folklore. The only evidence of the creature's existence was a missing taxidermy mount and a grainy black and white photograph of that mount, which fueled strange speculation about what kind of animal it really was. Now, after 121 years, the taxidermy mount has been found, and the creature that once spooked some of the Madison Valley's first white settlers has come home. And uh, the guy's grandson has it. He's their display in it. Hmm. Madison Valley History Museum is the name of the museum. They call it a ring docus or shuka warakin. Shuka warakin. Two of the names that it's been given, yeah. It strongly resembles a wolf, but sports a hyena-like sloping back and an odd-shaped head with a narrow snout. Its coat is dark brown, almost black, with lighter tan areas and a faint impressions of stripes on its side. The mount hmm. is an amazingly good shape. It was shot in 1886. They do not know what this is. It's, it's not an example of any, any type of animal living that they know of. Interesting. And if one has any kind of connections with uh, Dogman and that kind of stuff, too, once again. Well, well, I mean, it could. It, it, it's, it's a possibility, depending on what this thing is capable of doing. You know, um, it's, it's possible. It, it, it terrorized people. I mean, the guy that shot it was like a hero. Oh, what, what, what was the other name of that? Uh, well, that's an ugly-looking thing, isn't it? Man, gosh. Um, oh, you found it, huh? Thank you. Oh, I, I found, uh, yeah, I, I found a bunch of images of it as well. Um, and some alleged photographs in the wild, looks like. Um, they're big, big fellows. What was another name? Did, is there another name out there that the people talked about, about a giant... Wolf type thing that terrorized people. I have to look into that. There's a there's another name for. Hmm, you hear about once in a while. Hmm, I don't know. They Very think this this may be a, a living example of a of a dire wolf. There, a dire wolf. That's it. How do you spell dire wolf again? So make sure D-I-R-E. It's... Hey, Dire Wolf, okay. It just might be the case, huh? You know, I mean... something, something, uh, something ancient, you know, some Ice Age animal that survived, but at least uh, in very small numbers. If you, if you see one, there's a hundred of them out there. General rule. If you see two, there's a thousand. And they have so many different variances of of wolves seem to be able to breed with also awful, awful lot of things. There's the the cross between the coyote and the wolf, and then there's a wolf with uh, other domestic dogs. And uh, could there possibly be you know some like some dudes uh, brought some hyena, hyenas over and decided to cross breed them with wolves? You never know. I mean, why not? You got the power and, the, well, and you got the the, the, the uh, resources, uh, and you in you know, and you're it, it's you, hyena like. I, I've heard people describe to me, even down here in the south, hyena like animals that they've seen while they're hunting. That they're built way up high at the front end and down low on the back end. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I've heard that described over and over again. So that you know, they must be there. Uh, and now here's an example of one. So, yeah, that, that goes back to crypto and, and, and you know, people, uh, crypto means that's an imaginary animal. No, no, it's not imaginary. That means it hasn't been officially discovered yet. And and so they have this example in a taxidermy form. Why don't they declare it discovered? 
you know, there it is. You know, you can examine it to see if it's real, if it's real. And you say, well, if there were, there's a hundred of them out there somewhere. In 1886, there was. You know, uh, I, I, I wonder that bar that they keep holding up, uh, you know, that you have to exceed to get something discovered, it changes. They move it up and down on you. If you, if you try to discover like a, a, a new butterfly, it's not so high. You try to discover Bigfoot, it's impossibly high. You can bring Bigfoot in there and brush his teeth in front of the camera, and, and it's not going to work because the bar, is, the bar is so high. Uh, and this thing right here, this uh, Shuka Warakin or whatever they call it, is clearly something different. You know, I, I wonder why it's more than just a curiosity. Why it should be some, somebody should be working on that. You got it. You got an example. You got something in the flesh. They should be working on it to try to determine that it, if it's, it's genetically different. If it is, it needs to be declared a species. Uh, well, it should be you know, very why, easy. Why, it should should be very easy to do that as far as you know, gene wise, as far as doing research and yeah, it's it's not fossilized. Well, the hair's right there, you know, the follicles and everything. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's skin tissue still there, obviously, the one way or the other. Now, I don't know, the taxidermy, I don't know how that would affect it, but I don't. Yeah, Maybe. you could drill it. You could just drill, drill it to, just drill into a, the core of a tooth and get that out. There you go. Yep, so that's uh, what they say now. But no, it's, it's it's, it's, do you want to? That's the question. If there's no desire to do it, then nobody's going to do it. Nobody, to them, it's just circuit sideshow. But it's not. It, it, this thing was living and was terrorizing a whole entire area. Well, you know, one of the so, theories that I hear, and it's just a theory that some people say, and I don't have any relevance to it, but some, there has an argument out there that uh, one of the reasons why they're 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 keeping you know, there's a hush hush about a lot of these things is because uh well you know there's an awful lot of guns in this country and an awful lot of well you know uh if, if it was confirmed it might be a lot more uh poaching going on it which would translate in more people individuals actually human beings being shot <laughs> one of the things like bigfoot you know you got every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there that uh, with a gun chasing after Bigfoot. Next thing you know, they see some guy camouflage, uh, you know, do you know, hunting for deer or turkeys, and say, "Well, he looks like Bigfoot. I'll shoot him." You know. So, is that a legit enough excuse for it? I don't think so, but that's one of the suggestions out there. <clears throat> there's so many. There's so many circumstantial suggestions as to why they're not. Um, researching these things but the things that make most sense to me are a it's a threat to their official narrative and b um <clears throat> with the uh they must have been you know uh like the, the manifest destiny and this whole idea of conquering this whole land that um part of it has been the erasing of the true history of this whole land so and the people and most of the, uh, well, you know, I, I think that uh, you know you can't even you can't even go out west in a lot of states and pick up an arrowhead if you see one on the ground. You know, uh, to me that's just tragic because it 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 smacks of you know what have they got to hide? You know, why do they why do they not want a person to try and figure out? the ancient peoples that were here, you know, in their true history. Well, this it's all like back they to, have something against No, it goes, it goes all back to eugenics, and, uh, I mean, whether we want to hear it or not, and it, believe me, I'm no li bleeding liberal in any way, but uh, the, the truth is the truth when it comes to history. When you look over and over again, and what was coming out of England and Europe, and places like the Tapestock uh, Institute or... The Fabian Society and this whole thing, you know, about how to to maintain the empire, 
And uh, part of what was is the realization that in order to maintain the empire, that a lot of the uh, original history of these, these 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 countries and regions that that were colonized, they, in their theory, in order to maintain uh, some homogeneity, you know, some unity in it all the thing was to erase the past of these people. And, and to those that like, would, like, they, like they never happened. Right. And so if if you're uh in those who were uh quote unquote fit enough to, to assimilate, they were allowed to hang out and those that were refused that refused to, well, they were put in concentration camps and, and killed. Put in, in, in reservations and whatever you want to call it. And, and uh, you know, they tried to enslave Native Americans, and, and they just weren't any good as slaves. That's one of the reasons why they had to bring a bunch of African Americans over here, because they figured out another way thing to happen, too. When it comes to slavery... You know what the, you know, you know what the original name for Choctaw was? I do not. Chateau. They were Chateau. They called themselves Chateau. Which means they, means to separate, to go different directions. Ah, uh-huh. and they they started calling themselves Chateau whenever, uh, maybe maybe in the ancient past, but especially here after the Trail of Tears. Uh, uh, Chateau can also mean to set apart. You know, a people set apart, but. Mm. You know, I thought that was real interesting because, uh, you know, it, uh, it kind of is descriptive of the of things that have happened to the Choctaw, you know, when they were separated, uh, Treaty of Nancy and Rabbit Creek. So they, they have, some of them stayed and some of them went out west, and that, that's the separation. Hmm. And uh, but, but, but see, the fact that I would even want to know that disturbs people. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm talking about. They... They, they 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 don't want you to pick up an arrowhead and wonder anything about it. You know, they don't want you to pick up a piece of pottery and, and look at the design on it and try to figure, you know, who are these people. They, they want these people to disappear from all memory. You know, mm-hmm. and that to me is unacceptable. Yeah. And that ties into all... The very, that ties the very into people that... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say time on the pub. This ties into all other aspects of too. When you talk about anthropology, anthropology, um, if you look at um, even dating and look at um, um, archaeology and all that, uh, one of the most fascinating things, if you get a chance to um, read a book called. Uh, a guide to uh, a guide to the dark ages and you're going to find out some very interesting things if you follow through with especially with the, the source citations and etc you, you know <laughs> you know, at least look, understanding of how empire creation has worked and how everybody except for the inner circle near the top of the pyramid if you will just like a corporation, the average people are just, you know, as, as a need to know basis. Uh, and the rest of us are just basically uh, operating on uh, con- uh, speculation and and uh, whatever they spoon feed us. So if you start doing your own research about uh, Things and then you start collecting Indian heads and you start finding a place. You might find out. Heck, you might find a, a burial mound that uh, didn't come thousands of years ago, but was actually uh, built in say 1890. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Where there are tens of thousands of dead Indians with shotguns and you know, with with the bullet heads, bullet wounds to the head type of thing and. That's what they don't want you to find out. <laughs> that's what they, that's part of. I'm pretty confident looking at the behavior throughout the world 
Western world or the known world, the colonization of it, whether it was well, the, the, the German, the Dutch, the German, the Dutch, the English, whoever it may be, the Spanish, the Portuguese, they all had a standard formula of conquesting uh, a region. So, and you can call the reservations or reduction camps or concentration camps, but there's a reason why for the past 500 years, not just tens of millions, but hundreds of millions have been slaughtered at the hands of, well, Western European expansionism. So, it's just the way it is. I mean, you can see people say, oh, you're anti this and anti that. And you know what? I'm just observing what is and what the records state. That's all. You know, am I for it, against it? Does it even matter if we're against it? Who am I? <laughs> well, the Indians are still here with us. Native peoples are still here in greatly reduced numbers, uh, and 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 you know forced into a different lifestyle. But you know they're not they're not totally you know obliterated. Uh, some tribes did get obliterated. Oh, uh, many of them. It, many it, of them. You go to you go to Northern California. There was a, over 120 different dialects, different people that 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 hardly knew each other, but they they were separate clans or separate tribes, and there was hardly anything known about them. And they they were they after the gold rush of 1849, they were exterminated. There's no other way to put it. They were run down with dogs and horses. And uh, the state of California had a three million dollar coffer that paid out bounties for Native American scouts. Just yeah, bring it in and get cash. And then you know, there's these. I don't know if there's how much record there is about it, but clearly, um, the big fellow in the forest, the hairy fellow. Uh, you know, where does time period uh, in American history where a lot of men, the, the way they made a living was pelts killing animals. And, uh, you know, how many of those creatures were murdered, slaughtered during that time period and during the manifest destination, manifest destiny period? Um, was there some kind of uh, unwritten, you know, yes, you and I know there's a lot of things when you're in part of groups and all that that are unwritten but are, are known. Most of it, and probably most of it. Yeah. yeah. So what you find written is sanitized. Yeah. Definitely if it's going to incriminate the group, they're not going to be, give you too much. <laughs> and no one in their right mind is going to give you access to a piece of paper that leads right back to them and genocide, murder, and deception, and thievery, and stealing your money, and everything else. So and, uh, you know, that's, that's part of our history, too, as uh, Americans, is that uh, organized crime uh, at the highest levels, highest levels, that go way beyond, you know, Gaddy and and all the other well-known, uh, you know, Italian mafia hey, or we, whatever. So. We didn't have any patience or time with trying to assimilate anybody. I mean, the United States just went straight across the West like a steamroller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they did. You know, and one of the things, too, is during that time period, there was, well, it was happening in the United States. It was happening in other places like Australia and, or uh, definitely Africa and South America. And the guys comparing in their notes. And there was a time period, especially... Uh, uh, with the abolitionists and this whole idea of freeing the, the slaves and treating people like uh, equal and all that, but it didn't work. And the reason it didn't work is because the people, once they got conquered, the conquered people did not want to be English or didn't want to be German or didn't want to be Europeanized. They wanted to be who they were. So you'll find over and over again, record after record of whole groups of people within one generation, which is really important to do. If you're going to conquer a group of people, they realize if you wipe out the mass, the vast, vast majority of them, one generation, the trauma of that, whoever's left, is pretty much going to conform, and 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 melt into the culture, and 
And, and it wasn't original. This is something that's been going on for thousands of years. This is what the, you know, the early pagan Roman Empire was doing. This is what happens all over the place. And so is Western Europe uh, it was colonizing, especially what we know as the Western world or the Western Hemisphere. It's what they did. And they realized that's what they had to do in order to maintain control. I'm not saying it's right at all. I'm just saying this is the practicality of it, the pragmatic parts of it. And why uh, and why it happened, and uh, you know, if you're a guy, you know, rising in the ranks, and you're promised this, that, and that, but if you fail, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be big stain on you and your family's name. Well, you're gonna be more likely to have your subordinates, the subordinates, uh, put round up all the quote unquote savages and put them in in cages or in in pens and just uh, starve them to death. <laughs> You know, just re- you'll rationalize justification for your behavior. We all do it, right, one way or the other. So, and um, so it goes back once again to Bigfoot. You know, this, you know, why, why, if there's, if there are thousands of people who've seen this thing, you've had your own experiences. Other people have had their experiences, and yet the government isn't giving it any credence. So the question is, why? Well, who? What and where and then why? So, and everything does lead back to uh, the government, and that um, well, the question is why. And I, you know, the most logical thing that one can determine is, uh, <clears throat> especially when it comes to um, developing the country, uh, turning it into basically a extension of Western Europe that you would just not want to tell anybody, not encourage it. Let's put it that way. Don't encourage it. And uh, if, if body is shown up or if there's any real substantial substantial video out there, make it short and sweet. And the, you, need, you can allow a little of it in there for those who really want to know. But for the most part, eh, does it? Does the guy that's living in a suburb in Philadelphia need to know that uh, there's burgers down south? Uh, I guess only if he wants to. Yeah, but the government's you know if you're if you're the if you're you know the governing the governing uh, body of your society, do you want them to be like first of all everyone Tom Dick and Harry going around with guns and hunting the thing, and B uh, that's that's A, and then B is with expansion and with the servants of brawl and all that sort of sprawl. Do you want you know discouraged people anyway, uh, worrying them that there might be a twelve foot hairy guy that could uh, you know might potentially cause you some problems. <laughs> you know it's okay to keep it in the folklore level, but don't make it you know too like. Uh, Definitive, you know what I mean. In fact, there's there's an advantage of social control to keep it as a mystery. Um, hey, it's going to make a guy like you, MK, look like look bad, and they can use that against you and guys like you. And of course, you know that you experience that. So, you know. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you got to keep the old blinders on and don't look too far to the right or to the left. You know. Uh, it's in order to accomplish anything, you have to stay focused. You know, well, that, the, uh, but, the, that, but that is, but then you see, you're, see you're, you're operating outside the uh, the way it's supposed to be done. You're supposed to go to co- uh, college or university, get your degree, rise in rank, get your tenure, work within the confines of the uh, the structure that's already that's offered out there. And uh, if you go see, going solo, being independent, it's much people people like that to, to believe that this country uh, cherishes and celebrates individuals. That's further from the case. And all you have to do for first start out with every town you go into, it all looks the same. I mean, every town, they all have the same McDonald's and the same Burger King, and everything. All, everything looks the same. And so this whole homogenous nation of the nation has been systematic and deliberate. And uh, see, you you 
by just operating uh, on your own or a threat to the system in which you and I have lived under. And you must understand that. So, uh, um, so I don't that, feel like I'm a threat, but maybe I am. <laughs> you know, it, you, it, you, feelings that have no no bearing into this, and you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling doesn't matter at all. What matters is, uh, well, let's put it this way, MK. How much support have you been, received from um, the science community? Oh, I probably not. Well, there you go. <laughs> then the question is, what? Well, you know, I, they're, 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 you know, I recognize that their science community is made up of people uh, with all, all the trappings and failings that they come with. And, and I know uh, there are big footers uh, and, uh, that have PhDs that were big footers first and went and got a PhD. So that they could be somewhat of importance, you know, uh, for that very reason. Uh, so, you know, if, if that goes back to sub- subjective or deductive reasoning, you know, that's uh, that's uh, subjective. Whenever you you have your idea of what you want to do, and then you go get a degree so that you'll be listened to. Well, that's not the case, you know. Obviously, that's really not the case. Is uh, it? Uh, well, I mean, it, 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 you can be the man. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. If you're if you're a PhD, uh, but that doesn't mean if you're any any many more correct. Uh, it just it just means that you'll be listened to, probably. But you know, by a certain selective, a certain select of uh, the community. But it's not. But the, you know, you know, you know as well as I do yeah. that. That, you know, so that, and so, so and so, uh, professor of so and so, so and so. You know, uh, they like <laughs> programs, TV, whatever. And all they like that PhD. I mean, uh, it, it, what does a PhD mean to a big boy? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it means it means it's a level playing field. You know, but it means something to people who who think it, it means something. Right, you know, it, 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 you can you can get your you can bend ears with it uh, for yeah for a little bit, but let's face it. First of all, pill of authority only takes so far, and just because a man has a PhD doesn't mean that he's in any position to uh, dictate what the agenda is going to be for mm, that year and the coming years in the institution that he works at. If that were the case, there would be <clears throat> well-documented, serious research done to, to, to settle the question once and for all for the general public. But that is not happening. That does not happen. So there's a reason for that. And obviously, ultimately, at the end of the day, it serves to the the ruling, uh, the governing body of the country they live in to keep it... Um, Confusion and mystery. I was talking a little bit uh, in the show I was on about uh, the Illuminati playing cards, which has a lot of validity, by the way. And you'd be especially surprised how they predict uh, who's going to be the president and everything. And one of the things is about Bigfoot in the media and how they basically, I mean, and it's observable. They use it as a way uh, to tantalize the public and to make a mockery of it. So they always have some you know, reporter on there, and they all look the same with their suit and ties or the women's power suit and their all their makeup on, and they just make fun of it. Which I don't know how people can't see the contradictions. Well, I guess I can, but you're looking at somebody who's all covered in makeup, uh, st- you know, staring at a prop. Teleprompter telling you what whether Bigfoot is real or not. You ought to see that the contradiction in that already. And why would you even listen to that person? <laughs> that person doesn't demonstrate any ability to put critical thinking themselves. So, but most people that's what we're conditioned to do. So the the reporter says so with a chuckle and a smile, and they always have the two. Always got to have the two stories, right? This is always got to have the two. You got to have the 
the believer and the debunker. Now, you want to ask yourself that question. Is, is it real fair and balanced reporting, or is it... Because, no, it doesn't go anywhere beyond that. It's just a chuck on a well, you're, 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 you're show The show ends where it began. Right. <laughs> hey, look here. I'm, I'm going to have to go. It's after 3 o'clock. Um, Absolutely. We've been we'll, going at we'll, this for two and a half hours. So so how about uh, yeah, uh, yeah. next I'm, next next week? Um, we'll try it again next Wednesday, same time? Yeah, that would be, be fine. All right. Lots more to talk about, as you can tell and I can tell. So. All right. Okay. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cover some of those uh, topics that you got a uh, list of. Oh, we've got lots of them. So we'll, we're... Yeah, <laughs> no, we, don't, we won't wander too much. <laughs> All right. Thanks, MK. Right. Talk to you later. Right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Uh, once again, this is MK Davis. You can find his work on the davisreport.com and uh, Greenwave 2010FB. And there's lots of, of articles. I enjoyed my conversation with MK. I really did. So, got to tackle. We got that done. It's awesome. By the way, thanks for those who've been listening to the show, either via talk shoot and then uh, uh, those who have been checking out the show um, on um, YouTube. But please uh, subscribe to YouTube and please let me know that you're a follower on uh, uh, talk shoot. Simple buttons to click and uh, give me feedback. Let me know what you think. Please let me know what you think. Thanks. Kathy, I have some great jokes lined up for the March mattress sale going on now at Crane's Mattress. Oh, goody. Hey, why can't you play a fair game of basketball in the jungle? I don't know, Ray. Why? Because there's too many cheetahs. Oh, Ray, this March mattress sale has a lot of great deals. There's big discounts, plus Crane's cash. A real slam dunk, if you ask me. <laughs> Good one, Kathy. But what do you call a pig who won't pass the ball? Oh, Ray. A ball hog. Get it? Shop online at cranesmattress.com.